All right, there we go. Turn on the microphone, Aaron. Here we are. Uh, this is video three of... Put that in the frame. This is the Hairline Dubbin Fly Tying Kit. Top 20 patterns for the beginners. And what we are going to be tying up here is the Beadhead Caddis. Tying all the patterns in this uh, kit, all materials are provided from this included kit are included in this kit and um, I just got all these uh, kits out to my participants with my Project Healing Waters program so we're just doing a quick video series to uh, give them a video tutorial to match the book uh, that is also included in this kit so let's go ahead and slide on over to the bench and get this started all right so for our bead head caddis we are using we are using the size 12 wet nymph hook for our hook. Thread is the included 8 ot Vivas black thread. The let's see our bead head. We're going to be using the 1/8 inch Cyclops bead head gold. The body is a ice dub caddis green i've had this uh quite some time in a, a small little variety pack uh good stuff there and uh, for the thorax we're going to be using a hair's mask look at that it's the real deal say hello to my little friend all right so couple little tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way um, the easiest way for me personally to get the bead on the hook I've kind of come up with this little method where I will secure my hook in the vise about like so and then I'm able to take my bead pop it on just like that and if we look closely at the bead there is a large opening and a small opening there's the large and the opposite of that is the small opening and when we put the bead on the hook we want the small opening to go in first that way when we reset everything and get it in our vise the proper way that small opening of that bead will be forward with the large opening towards the rear. That's pretty important. Uh, sometimes if you accidentally biff it and you get that uh, bead on backwards, uh, due to that opening, larger opening in the back, it will actually cover the eye of the hook uh, without sliding all the way through. That tapered uh, side of that bead helps allow it to get past that bend. So anyways, the bead and the hook are now together and we're going to start our thread right behind that bead head. And we can advance our thread for, or towards the back just a little bit before we trim it off. Apologize for the squeaky vice or squeaky bobbin, but it is what it is right now. I'm changing back and forth going through all these uh, different patterns. All right, so we're going to take this to our kind of our, our tie-in point between the tip of the hook and the tip of the barb. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of thread. And we're going to dub on some of this ice dubbing. And when it comes to dubbing, one thing to keep in your mind, less is more, more or less. All right, we're going to take just a little pinch of that. And we're going to pull up with my pointer finger and I push down with my thumb and I twist the same direction. I'm not rocking back and forth. This is not my twisting. It's a, a one-way twist. Right? So I'm going to twist this onto the thread. Now, I don't need wax for this because uh, this is actually going on pretty good. Alright. We'll start our dubbing at the rear and we're going to taper this forward. We're going to take touching wraps in, and you could always add more if need be, which it's looking like we're going to have to do here in just a second. So I'm building up a taper to this body, 
Okay, we're almost there, but we need a little bit more. Another little pinch. And just add on a little bit more dubbing. And just as easy as it is to add dubbing, you can actually take a little bit off if need be. And as I'm wrapping, I'm just kind of helping this find its way to its natural position. We're going to go pretty pretty close to that bead head, but we're going to leave a little bit of room for that thorax. And you know what? If it's a little bit buggy, hey, that's okay, because guess what we're making? A bug. That bug is a little caddis. All right, so we're going to come in with our hair's mask. And this is not in a little bag like the ice dub. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to trim off a little bit of hair from the mask, from the face, and a little bit from the ear. That way we get some different techniques, or not techniques, different textures. The ear can be a little bit difficult because it's such a fine hair. Alright, we're going to put that kind of work it all together. Um, the book suggests putting it in your palm. And then let's get this light back here. There we go. Put it in your palm. Just kind of use your finger to kind of mix that up. Now if you get if you're in it to win it and you're into making your own dubbing blends, what's really uh, easy to use is a coffee grinder. Pick yourself up a coffee grinder at the thrift shop something clean oh, you don't want to use the one you're going to use on the daily let's go ahead and get that light out of the way all right so we have a little bit of dubbing and we're going to do that same technique and i'm going i got a i got a larger clump so i'm going to take about half of that i'm not going to try to put it all on all on at once and this is going to be a little bit a little bit more difficult, a little bit more patience putting on our dubbing for the hairs here. And what they call this is a dubbing noodle. Alright, so we're going to wrap this back here, build up our thorax, and we're looking for this to look pretty buggy. And just like that. I've had um, quite a bit of practice doing this. I've done this a, a few times. And uh, I've gotten to the point where I can coincidentally uh, match up the uh, amount of dubbing with the actual dubbing that I need. But if you run short, you can always add on another little pinch. And if you find you have a little bit too much on there at the very end, you can carefully just strip it off and uh, get yourself a nice clean beginning point. All right, so just like that, we'll add our whip finish. Now when we do our whip finish, we want to make sure we keep it behind the bead. One, two, three. Nice and tight, and we'll do another round. I think I might have to add a touch of wax to my bobbin. I'm going to do that real quick. All right, once that's secured, we'll go ahead and trim off our thread. Okay, I added just a small little touch of wax to my bobbin so it doesn't squeak as much or as bad. Um, and at this point, if you have a, a brush, you can kind of pick that out. Uh, we have bodkins at our disposal. We can use our bodkins to kind of pick that out if we need to. It's looking pretty good. I like to look at this caddis. But yeah, there it is. That is a uh, bead head caddis. We're going to go ahead and jump in the line and get another one on. All right, same thing as before. We are using our size 12 wet nymph hook. And what I found the best way to get that bead on is to 
use the vice. Uh, it's it's a great third hand, right? When we get our bead on, we want to make sure we put it in uh, the small hole first. There's a tapered end and then just kind of that small hole. So we want to put that small hole in there just like that. All right, so these hooks have a barb on them. Sometimes you might have to mash that barb down uh, in order to get that bead on and around. Uh, it's always good practice to mash your barbs if you are a catch and release angler. Uh, typically what I do, what I have, when I tie flies with hooks on, or with barbs on them, uh, using barbed hooks, I will leave the barb on and my final stream side check is to make sure the barb is smashed and if I leave the barb on if I give it to somebody who wants to keep the barb on well then it's already there um, but it also lets me know I haven't used that fly yet all right let's start our thread our black what is it a dot yep black a dot right behind that bead head and you might see some videos and some other uh, fly tires talking about having to lock that bead in place uh, right away. I personally don't feel you need to spend too much time up front uh, spending way too much time and too much thread building up something to hold that there when uh, towards the end of the process you're going to have material there holding that bead from sliding back and forth anyways. And if you we're not worried about crowding the eye because we have that bead there, but you can crowd the bead. All right, super simple. We'll, we'll work our thread towards the rear. Standard tying point, tip of the hook, tip of the barb. Um, with this caddis, what we can also do is we can also go into that bend just a touch, just a little bit. All right. Here we are, our green ice dubbing, a little pinch, and again we're going to pull our thread towards ourselves. I start at the top, I leave my finger where it is, I guess I do move it, but we're twisting one way, it's a one way dub, we're not going back and forth. When I reset to re-grip, I let go. And dubbing takes practice. There's there's no trout about it. Dubbing takes practice. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, the one downside to uh, beginner kits like this is they're kind of limited on hooks. But you know, if they threw full size packets of uh, of hooks in there, then the beginner kit would the cost of it would just grow exponentially. But if you're not satisfied with any of these patterns, take a razor blade to it and safely uh, strip it back down and start again. Practice makes perfect. All right, we'll taper our body. You know, I'm gonna add just a touch more just to give that a little bit more of a body up front. A little bit more. Slide that to meet and go back a little bit. There we go. We are right behind that Cyclops bead head. And again, we're going to take our hair's mask and we're going to trim off a little bit of hair from the ear and a little bit from the face. That's going to get us some different textures. All right, same as before, there's our two different colors. See how we got like the lighter tan and the other fluff? So we're just put that in our palm. And I, I'm actually pretty new to this technique. I, I've never, never done this before, just putting dubbing in my palm like this and using my finger to, to mix it up. Um, so, you know, it goes to show, as somebody who's been tying thousands and thousands of flies, uh, there's always something new to, to learn. All right, so our dubbing is blended. We don't need all that. Probably 
put this in a little container or a little baggie um, save that little blend for later because why not right all right same as uh, the ice dub we're gonna pinch and twist this on make our our dubbing noodle if you will And as always, less is more. If your fingertips are really dry, you might find yourself having some difficulty. So I don't like licking my fingers and then touching material and then licking my fingers again. Um, so if you find yourself having dry fingers and you don't have any dubbing wax or don't want to use a dubbing wax, and just want to moisten your fingers up a little bit, keep a wet sponge nearby. And then you can just dab your hands or your fingertips in that wet sponge. just a touch more dubbing. I want this thorax to be pretty pretty buggy. Nice prominent thorax. There we go. Slide that all up there. Yeah, I like the looks of this one. Alright, we'll take our thread directly behind that bead and we'll just do our whip finish. Add a touch of head cement if you so desire. And keep that whip finish behind that bead head. Alright, we'll carefully trim that off. Yeah, buddy. That is what I call a, uh, not what I call, it's what they call a beadhead caddis how about that all right so let's go ahead where are we going to go from here what is our next next on the docket we just finished our beadhead caddis. Up next will be the next page in the book, and that appears it will be a yellow and partridge soft tackle. Yellow and partridge soft tackle. All right, um, we might do another one of these before lunch. It might be after lunch, but we are putting these all in a playlist, and we're going to get these out um, as. I can work my way through the uh, through the book, through the kit, getting the top 20 fly patterns for beginners. Uh, this is all part of that hairline dub and kick. Steve Trebowski, see you checking in. Good morning. Um, yeah, we're going to probably hop back on here, do another live stream, and do another pattern. This is way easier than trying to edit and produce on um, the production value of a, of a bona fide video. So we're just doing these as live streams and working our way through the book. So catch up on the previous uh, videos uh, in the uh, Hairline Dubbin playlist. So, all right, till next time, thank you all for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, happy tying and uh, tight lines. Peace. <laughs>